like this. What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I didn't mean to hit that. It's your boy, JB, and we are here today with the review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 6, Episode 16, you guys. And the episode is titled, Crab Boiling Over. It's really interesting that they're ending the season with an odd number. Because there's going to be 17 episodes plus the reunion. And I don't know how many parts the reunion is, right? If it's three parts, then 17, 18, I mean, 17, 18, 19, 20. Well, I guess that would be, wow, that's really interesting, though. But, um, yeah, so next week is the finale of Potomac. So, you guys. Before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and are not yet subscribed to the channel, then I'm going to need you guys to do me a big favor and stop checking me out on this date. Hit that subscribe button, the notification bell button, share the video, and with that out the way, without further ado, let's go ahead and just discuss The Real Housewives of Potomac. All right, you guys, so I'm getting some kind of eyes <laughs> looking at me. There's this, a man that just pulled up a Spectrum guy. And he is looking at me, so we're not going to be out here too, too long, but let's get into it. All right, you guys, so before we actually even get into Potomac, let's talk real quick, shall we? I want to, I just feel like people are losing their minds on social media when it comes to Potomac or any other house, more specifically Potomac and just the Black Housewives in general. Like, damn, how did y'all do my nails? I mean... They are chipping already. That ain't cool with me. Ain't cool with me. But, um, whatever. Y'all don't even care about my nails. So, I saw this post on this Facebook group that I'm in. I'm not, I'm not going to post the person's... Oh, he going up there. So, I'm not going to post the person's name. I hope he don't knock down a branch on this car. I'm not going to post the person's name. But it says, Escala and her husband aren't a good fit for R-H-O-P. Escala is the definition of an opportunist, and her husband, Dre, ugh. He looks and acts just like Lurch from the original Adams Family. Dre literally has no style, no personality, and no swag. I really hope that they don't come back next season. Hashtag R-H-O-P. <laughs> Dre hadn't even been on this season, but, I mean, we just literally met Dre on this trip. Dre pulled um, Chris to the side and had a whole conversation with Chris. And then they literally have a picture of Lurch and... They have a picture of Lurch and Dre side by side. And a lot of people, you know, like, do you know him? Do you know her? Like, Ascala is the definition of an opportunist. All of these women on reality TV or even Real Housewives... All of these women are opportunists, like all of them are, because number one, if it wasn't for housewives, we wouldn't even know anything about these women. And then they, they, they use this show as an opportunity to plug their businesses. So they're all opportunists. Like, let's stop playing that game. She's an opportunist. She's a definition of an opportunist. Every woman on this fucking show is a definition of an opportunist. And then the fact that he looks like Lurch from the original Adams Family. Dre literally has no style, no personality, and no swag. Did you go on a date with him and he turns you down? Did you ask him out on a date and he turns you down? Like, y'all just, some of y'all just really need to chill. But let's get into this episode shit. So, this episode, they make it back to the house, right? And, and Wendy tells them to get ready for dinner. They're going to be having dinner at 7 p.m. So, they're going to be having a crab boil. I was questioning, like, because they, because when they got ready for the crab boil, Wendy was like, "Yeah, you know, it might be a little chilly outside," and we see everybody, you know, in blankets and shit. I'm like, "Damn, how cold is it?" But you know what? I have to forget. This is D. This is the DMV area, so their cold is a lot different from the cold down here in Texas. So yes, I have to remember that. So it probably was freezing hell. G said, "You know what? Forget this. I'm going inside," and I actually don't blame G at all. But it was a nice fancy dinner from what I could see, right? It was nice, right? So I believe it was Hank Arnold Stewie who asked the question of Eddie, has he spoken with his parent, his family, right? He said he and his mother have had a conversation. So they're, they're baby steps at this point, right? So 
when G finally did come back out, right, he was making a joke about sleeping. And Saturn's rings, she was like, uh, why, I mean, you making a joke about sleeping? It's like, what are you talking about? She was like, earlier. And then Hey Arnold Stewart was like, yeah, you remember earlier on the bus when you wouldn't let me sleep? He was like, what are you talking about? What bus? She says, do you have amnesia? Do you have Alzheimer's? And Mia was like, wait a minute, that ain't cool. Now, Mia can't pronounce Alzheimer's. She kept saying Alt, Alzheimer's or Alzheimer's, whatever. She can't pronounce Alzheimer's. Which ain't no big deal. It's Alzheimer's, Mia. So Mia had to hit, you know, y'all know I don't see it for Mia, but I was here for Mia in this scene. And when she said, girl, first of all, where is your husband at? At home with my kids. Are you sure about that? Yes, I am. Anything else? Ooh, somebody a little testy. Somebody's a little testy because they don't really know that their husband is at home with the kids. Or if he is at home with the kids, does he have a boyfriend over Mm, somebody's a little testy. Love it. Y'all know I love it. So, now Mia, I don't know where this came from. The fact that Ashley needs a dick, a big black dick. <laughs> I don't know where that came in at, but okay. I guess. I, I, I don't know the significance of that. But okay, whatever. So... I'm going to go ahead and include this in because it really wasn't even a big part of the episode. But it was funny. So while the ladies make it back, you know, home, right? So Karen, actually, before they even got back home, they had a little fun with Ray and Karen, right? So Eddie and Wendy have set up a cake. So when I guess when um, Ray and Karen went cake testing, Ray wanted for a woman to jump out of the cake. So they had Karen jump out of the cake. And she did talk about her invitations to her, um, you know, her, you know, her, um, what is it? Her, her, her vow renewal, right? So, what am I talking about? Oh, so the invitations to the vow renewal. She sold them to open them outside, right? Everybody was like, what the hell? Oh, my God. There was butterflies in there. It was kind of cute, but I'm like, that is kind of interesting, though. Why would you send butterflies? Like, you know, they might die, right? But hey, it is what it is. It was fun watching them open those um damn boxes. That was fun. So let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So let's talk about Mia and G. Now, Mia, I'm going to keep talking about you, right? Not talking about you. I'm going to keep talking about this point that I'm, I'm, I've been making. Yes, you know, I mean... I've talked to, I've talked about what Candace said about, you know, your mama. I thought that your mama stuff was funny, but after a while it did become redundant and it's like why are you repeating it, right? And then, you know, when Mia was talking about the fact of her mom relapses, that bitch has to see her. But Mia, you're the one that has literally made your mother a big actually not even a big, she is your mother is your storyline. See, me personally, I don't know if I can do something like that, right? Make my mother my storyline. I don't know if I could do that. And I'm talking about my biological mother. I, if I was on, a, if I did a reality show, I wouldn't want her to be the storyline, right? She wouldn't be the storyline because I wouldn't want to give her, I wouldn't want to do stuff like that. But I would, if I were to talk about it, I would talk about, you know, how it's affecting me in my life. Which is, tech, I mean, it is what Mia's doing, but... The crux of your storyline is your mother. Like, you're talking about her drug use. Her, I mean, it's just, and if you're worried about her relapsing, I would have never brought this story to the show, right? Because once you put it out there, it's out there. And whatever people, whatever people say on social media, and if your mother see it, that's going to fall on you, not the person who said it. You know, that's going to really fall on you because you're the one that brought that story to television not your mother and not anybody who would say anything negative about your mom right so i guess after they went to chesapeake mia and gordon came back it was their eighth year wedding guest anniversary right they went to go celebrate it so mia's phone kept ringing it was her mom and at one point gordon answered the phone and she and her he and her mom got into it with each other right and she was talking about the fact that um she was talking about the fact that her mom didn't know what to feed the kids. 
which I find that quite interesting, right? I, always, I find that quite interesting that she didn't know what to feed the kids. I'm not talking about the mother herself. I'm talking about the situation, right? Especially with the younger kids, right? Because, see, my mom, when I was a kid, and I stayed with my grandmother, she would always be sure, because I'm a picky eater, number one, she would always be sure to say, take some food, you know, have some food over at my grandmother's house for me to eat. So my grandmother would ask me, what do you want? I tell my grandmother what I want. My grandmother goes in the kitchen and fixes it for me. And then at, at a certain point, it got to the point where I was, my grandmother just said, what do you want? And I would fix my own food. At, at, at a, I got to a certain age where I started fixing my own food. So I just find that kind of interesting. But when Mia and G, Mia got went back because she was kind of afraid that her mother would leave the kids. I'm like, really? You were afraid of that? I mean, okay. So they got back and Mia's mother and G got into an argument with each other in front of the kids and her mother did then leave. I guess your mother probably felt disrespected. I don't know. I don't know what Mia's... I don't know. I I, I just really don't know what to, to say. But let me know what you guys thought about it. We're going to move forward. All right, you guys. Let's talk about Saturn's rings real quick. So she and her girls, they are out shopping for some stuff look like they looking like they're it looks like they were looking at sh i can never pronounce it shrubberies shrubbery sh flowers <laughs> they were looking for flowers right so she is doing a circle driveway girl that i mean that i mean that ugh, that house is an eyesore mm. That house is a whole eyesore, right? So they're talking, right? Those girls, I mean, they managed to read their mother every single time. I mean, she gets read, right? Those girls give her the absolute business. So they're talking about the fact that, you know, she's lonely and bored. I'm like, well, damn. Your teenage daughters are literally reading the entire hell out of you, right? So she does say that she is dating someone, and the producer's like, who, who is it? And she's like, I'm not telling. That's not your business, right? I think she's learned her lesson, right? I think she has learned her lesson not to put out there who she's dating, right? Because we know it's never, it's never gone well for her, right? Who, how many guys has she been linked with on this show? She, we have the guy, her, her good, her, the guy that was her friend that her mother wanted her to date, right? She went on that awkward date at one point. She dated Sherman. I really think that she and Sherman could have worked, had Monique and whoever else that was involved with that, Monique and Sharice. Had Monique and Sharice not done that shit situation with Sherman's ex-wife, Kendall, I think that Giselle and Sherman would have been fine. That was the cat. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Was that situation right? And then the Jamal situation. We all know that that was just storyline. So now I'm not gonna sit here and say that Giselle needs to be with a man, right? Because she doesn't have to be. If she wants to be single, that is her fine, and that is her prerogative, right? She doesn't need a man. Now I do. I you know she's talking about to her daughters about you know them dating, right? But. What her daughter said was a great point, right? How can they be in a relationship when they haven't saw a good representation of what a relationship should be? How a man should actually treat a woman, right? So I got what they were saying because they don't really know anything about Jamal and Giselle when they were married. They were divorced. So they don't know anything about that. And then over the last few years, she has not had a successful relationship. So they don't have basically the blueprint for what should be a happy and healthy relationship. So I got that, right? So then we we see her and she's meeting up with Dr. Ken, right? And she's talking to Dr. Ken. She's telling Dr. Ken that the girl said that she is emotionally unavailable. And he asked her, why did you even reconnect with Jamal? So she said that she reconnected with Jamal to, you know, get the family back together and also that he was starting to look at her differently. And also, you needed to secure your paycheck. Let's stop playing. 
But hey, it is what it is. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Oh, good God of hell. So with Hey Arnold Stewie, I can tell you guys right now that this scene is going to be rather short. It's not going to be lengthy at all because I don't have the patience or the wherewithal to want to discuss she and that creature, that creep that she calls a husband. So we're just going to talk about the first scene with her. The last scene with she and, and, and Michael Darby, I ain't discussing it. We're not going to discuss it at all. Only thing I'm going to say about that scene is he is so obsessed with Juan. That is it. So we see Ash. Hey, Arnold Stewie. She and baby Dylan, they went to go see her therapist. And even with this scene, I'm not going to talk about everything because because uh, some of it had to deal with that creep, that sexual deviant, that whatever you want to call him. Right. So she's talking about, you know, um, basically her attachment to the boys right and how she find it finds it hard to really just go out and just do anything without them but she did tell the therapist that she did you know go on a on a trip with her girlfriends right so then she starts talking about sex between she and he who shall remain nameless She's talking about how the doctor told her that if she wants to, you know, start back having sex, she can. It, well, no, she said it would be uncomfortable, right? I, I truly, you guys, I don't care. Actually, that's what I have in my notes. I don't care about their relationship because she was talking about the fact that because she was talking about the fact that um. What was she talking about? Oh. So I guess she... Oh, God, I'm still talking about him. She talks about the fact that she initiates sex, right? I can talk about that. She initiates it. That person doesn't want it. Don't care. So she's wondering if that person is getting their needs met somewhere else. Don't care. Don't care. I literally couldn't give a shit. I don't give one fuck a one fuck two shits or three dams about them and her sex life so like i said we're gonna move forward because i am not and i repeat i am not going to talk about that date with them if you want somebody to talk if i, I don't i mean you can guys can go watch ashley you can go watch um i know ashley's videos up i don't know who else has their some videos up but you guys can watch other people if you want to hear them talk about that date I'm not. I'm not going to sit here. As long as he's on this show, I'm making it my mission to not discuss him. So, we're going to move forward. And let's wrap the episode up, you guys. Let's talk about Wendy. So, I want to first say congratulations are in order to Wendy. She sold out that one wick candle. I don't know how much them candles are. By the, I don't know how much them candles are, but um, she sold them out because she posted it on Instagram last week that she sold out her candles. So we see Wendy as she's doing a photo shoot and her mom is there, right? So Wendy and her mom are talking and um, one really much with this scene, right? I'm just trying to basically stretch it out to give myself at least a minute on this scene. But it wasn't much. They were once, they talked to the photographer. He's an engineer, but he's also doing photography, right? So that segued into Wendy, you know, talking about her. You know, we all know Wendy, It we know she's a professor, and we all know that Wendy, I guess, I guess you would say that the, she, I know she did it for herself, but this was also, her degrees were also for her mother, in a sense, right? <clears throat> so Wendy is talking about, you know, how she went to school and did what, you know, what her, you know, basically kind of what her parents wanted her to do, but now she's living her dreams. And she says that her mother never apologized to her because she was talking about how, you know, her her son did something that he didn't re- really want to do. And she apologized to him for that. And she that's when she's that's how she got into talking about the fact that her mother really didn't apologize to her. Her mama got upset and walked the hell out. <laughs> I was like, damn. OK, but that's um that's the episode. Actually, you guys, let me know what you guys thought about it. And we will discuss it in the comment section below 
subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop anything else. Share the video and until the next one, you guys, do me a solid favor. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear a mask, socially distance, and be blessed, you guys. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. All right, you guys. Bye.